Superfan Giovanni here. Welcome to Classic Love One, episode 1126, featuring Static X with Dr. Bruce. From January 23rd, 2000, a Sunday night show, starting out a new week. Source of this one is a brand new Lost Tape from 2017. There isn't video for this episode, sadly. It's a brand new source for an existing episode, first recovered over a decade ago. Now 100% complete, with the missing 3 plus minutes or so restored, and a huge audio upgrade. This is the first known appearance for the band. And they returned to the show one more time during the Adam era in 2001. Sadly, uh, November 1st, 2014, Wayne Static died at the age of 48. Rest in peace, Wayne. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew. I'm not modeling anymore for the two of you. Loveline. Nate, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. For the those of you who haven't heard it uh, before, prepare for a uh, arduous night fraught with disappointment. Dr. Bruce is a uh, friend of Dr. Drew's. Don't start with me so early, knucklehead. <laughs> knucklehead. And uh, five long days. I'm, oh yeah, I'm not going to tolerate it Do- this time. Doctor okay. Bruce will uh, be here uh, all uh, week long, and uh, I really enjoy Doctor Bruce. I, I give him a hard time, but uh, he brings coffee, or at least he used to. Uh, he uh, enjoys talking about model airplanes and cars and all the other uh, nonsense that Drew doesn't have time for in his busy schedule. But uh, not Doctor Bruce. He's always uh, willing to uh, sit around and chew the fat uh, during the commercial about nonsense. So uh, I'm glad to see uh, Dr. Bruce in here, although actually I just got my uh, fill. Okay. All right, so it's going to be a long, uh, a long week. And Bruce, you are qualified, right? Right. Give your qualifications. I'm a board-certified physician with expertise in addiction medicine. And uh, you're normally an ER doctor, is that correct? Right. So in, in many ways, you're uh, even more qualified than uh, Dr. Drew, I would say. No. All right. Well, let's just say it anyway. Static X is our uh, guest tonight. Uh, Wayne, Tony, and Ken are all in here from the band. Uh, last time I saw Static X, a couple months ago on uh, Loveline, the TV show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is um, that, is Ken, that and right? I, Ken and I did the TV show a little while ago, and, and I, I just got to say I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I know this is your job, and you're like probably bored of this by now, but um, I actually... You know, you used to work at a regular boring office job a couple of years ago, and I used to listen to this show every single night, and I'm really honored to be on the show. Well, thank <laughs> you. I, no, listen, I don't, <laughs> I don't mind that kind of brown nose. I appreciate it. You know, there, there's, uh, there's certain people, like people do this all the time. They go, that dude's just being nice because you got a TV show. I'm like, that's why I got the TV show, you a-hole. <laughs> the people be nice to me for a change. <laughs> that chick, yeah, she only digs you because she saw you on TV. Yes, I yeah. know. That's why I'm on TV. <laughs> Were you trying to hurt my feelings? This is my master plan. Why don't I ever want to kiss my ass? Bruce, you could do with a little of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I, uh, you know, to to be honest, we do so many of these uh, these shows, uh, TV and radio, and they all they all basically turn into one show. And uh, I talk about this from time to time. I just here's how I divide the guests. I divide them into uh, three categories. There's uh, I like. I uh, don't like, and I can't remember. I didn't know they were on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Static X, I remember being on the TV show. It was just a few months ago, and they uh, fall into the like category. Now, I won't remember anything about the show, and I won't remember any details or specifics. It, it's just when you say Static X, I go, oh, yeah, I like those guys. So uh, we had a good time uh, on the TV, and I assume we're going to have a good time uh, on the radio as well. Wisconsin Death Trip is the uh, name of the CD. I'm uh, told just went uh, gold. And uh, congratulations on that. Oh, thanks a lot. 
And, uh, well, I don't know. Plug something while I uh, plug. You're going out with uh, Power Man 5000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, we actually uh, we start that tour in Seattle on Wednesday and um, or Thursday, so Friday. Thursday. Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. Well, you know, one of those days. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to be here in L.A. Uh, for any of you L.A. people um, on the second and third. Right at the palace. At the palace, mm-hmm. which is a great old sort of uh, Art Deco venue. Yeah. A nice. Uh, sure, I don't know, twenties yeah. or thirties uh, venue, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, Spider was just here from uh, Power Man 5000 uh, last week, and uh, seems like a nice guy. Yeah, they're, the mm-hmm. whole band are they're really nice guys, so it should be a fun tour. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, again, uh, well, I'll give a plug. Uh, they'll be in uh, Seattle on the 28th, whichever day that is. Uh, then it's Portland 29th, and uh, Frisco on the 1st, and then uh, Los Angeles on the 2nd and 3rd, and uh, I'll give out some of the rest of those uh Dates uh, is the uh, night wears on. We'll also uh, hear something from Static X, maybe uh, more than one thing. But I think now we'll go to the phones. Yeah. Tim? Yeah. You're 15? Uh huh. What's up? I'm just having a little trouble getting a uh, girlfriend lately. Because, uh, well, it's not completely her, but at my uh, high school, this, my ex, one of my ex girlfriends from a month ago, she's just been talking a lot of bad stuff about me. And you think that's why you're having trouble? Uh, yeah, in some, in yeah. some of the areas. I don't think uh, so. I never subscribe to that stuff, that uh, reputation stuff, especially no. with guys. Yeah, yeah. That, that might work with girls, but... Well, what, what's she saying? Uh, she's just saying I want to get laid. Something's wrong with his testicle? You, uh... <laughs> I think it was Victoria Jackson. <laughs> you, uh... Your girlfriend is telling other women in uh, the high school that you, you're interested in sex? My ex. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, stop the presses. Well, There's a guy in high yeah. school who wants to get Ooh. laid, everybody. Yeah. Next thing you know, she's going to be spreading the jack-off rumor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Watch out no. for that one. How, yeah, how that'll actually, kill you. That killed yeah. me. How, how long did you go out with her? Huh? How long did you go out with her? About two months. How much truth is in the rumor? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I mean, uh, I'll how, well, how many laid. times did you, did you get laid? None. All right. Good. Hey, Tim. Yeah? If you ain't going out with women at your high school, it's because they're not so into you, but it's not because of what your girlfriend is saying. Oh, uh, okay. All well, right. Well, Sorry, no, but... It could no. be that she's... Ju- oh, no, please. She, I think another way to go is, you know, he should just go to a different high school, you know, go date girls at a different high school anyway. It's kind of like uh, dating a girl you work with, you know? Just yeah, but we're, we're, yeah, you're not that mobile when you're 15. That's, well, that's the problem. True. It's like uh, you got to date the girls at your high school, and whoever lives across the street is your best friend. And that's just the way it is. Date a girl from junior high school. There, there you go. go. <laughs> but if, if you do what I do, you know what I do? <laughs> what do you do? I take a, um, one of those, uh, uh, what the hell are those uh, candies there? Uh, you get them at the movie theaters, nice and soft. Uh, juju uh, fruits. Goobers, uh, juju. juju. Yeah, juju, juju fruit, fruit will fruit. work. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, and I, uh, I get it nice and uh, hot in the sun. And then I put it on the end of my penis, and I stick that through the chain link fence <laughs> at the junior high. And then I just sit there. I don't call for people. I just... You've done this recently. Actually, no. I, uh, milk dot. That's Except what works the best. Right. Yeah, yeah i got to write this down. You have a problem with ants? It's great. Yeah. yeah. Small animals. Once in a while, you get a dog, an ant, a janitor, or a guy. But for the most part, it works pretty good. You know, I used to do that with licorice. Yeah, it didn't work as well. Yeah, it, 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 you you can tie it, but right. uh, it, it really around, yeah. it really keeps the pressure on you. Got to keep it going because uh, <laughs> if you can't keep it going, it'll fall off. I'm John, acceptable. John, um, yeah, John, you're 14. Yeah. What's up? Um, I was like, yo, at this party, like, hey, yo, hold on, show me. All right, we'll just hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Jay. Yeah, what's up? You're uh, 16. Yeah, Adam, you're awesome. Thank you. Um. Friday night, I had a threesome with these two chicks, and uh, one of them is very promiscuous, and I just want to know what are the And the other one's kind of (laughs) (laughs) prude. The other one's a prude. Yeah, the other one's a prude. I don't know what happened. She was uh, home from finishing school that weekend. uh, Define (laughs) promiscuous for us. All right, well, I'm just wondering, like, what's the risk of getting STDs from the chick that was very promiscuous because, like, she gave me head? Probably the same as the risk from the other two. Well, now, wait a minute. The, there was one other... There were two women. Yeah. You had, a, you had, you had two women? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. All right, I'm going to kill you when I see you, son of a bitch. <laughs> mm-hmm. it you was understand? my first time, dude. It was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah. My, uh, yeah. My, uh, you know, my version of a threesome was in high school? Two of my buddies watched while I whack off. <laughs> <laughs> that was as close as I got yeah. to a threesome. 
Mine was using both hands. I was going to say the pillow and the teddy bear. Oh, hey, li- Jay, really, did you have sex with both of them? Um, I had sex with one of them and the other one, and I just got head. Oh. Uh, how old were they? Uh, one is 14 and one is 10. 16. 16. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. You know, it's not, it's not cool. It's not good for you. It's not good for them. They're, these kids have probably had some serious problems in the past with males oh, abuse. Boy. And uh, you're contributing to the continuation of that. And All people, right. well... Well, listen, you're right, but he's 16. He don't know any better. He's not going to... He well, doesn't care yes, about that. He well, cares about the disease. Okay, and the disease, uh, certainly from oral sex, you can get the same disease as you get from any other kind of sex. So the the chances of getting yeah, gonorrhea is, is in the a, throat... Is a guy... is Yeah, in the throat, he's not... The, the, she's on him, right? Is what? she on you, Jay? Yeah. Did you get on her? No. All right, so... How many diseases well, can you get as a male from receiving oral sex? You know what I mean? I mean, aren't your chances decreased quite a bit? Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. D- it doesn't, okay. It's Jay. not a good way to look at it. Your chances are decreased because you're telling him, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. No, I'm not. I, I, I think he should go get himself checked out, but I, he, he can sleep tonight. Well, why is, why is he worried about it? Does he have, like, some weird symptoms that he's, you know? There, it, that's a why is valid it, why question. Is he worried about Does it? your mm-hmm. penis burn when you pee? No, nothing like that. I don't have any symptoms, but I'm just, like, scared. All right. How long ago did this happen? Friday night. Okay. First off, let me tell you this. It's all downhill from here, brother. Prostate's going to enlarge. You're going <laughs> to get a nice fat wife. You're going to die. Kids. <laughs> yeah. So enjoy this. Write this day down in your diary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Go get, go, get a, go get a test. All right. We'll get, like, an AIDS test and some other stuff and then put a condom on next yeah. time. You know, I hate to be the wet yeah. blanket, but the 14-year-old especially, you're, you're really, it's uh, contributing to the delinquency of the 14-year-old who, obviously, this kid has had uh, molestation in the past or abuse. Well, or, and you're something. setting up a... All right, but... So, but I, don't, I think just to say, hey, this is cool, this is great, he scored with two other... Uh, yeah, but 16 is not. as long as they're... Screwed up 14 and 15 year olds who are willing to have threesomes with 16 year old guys. There will be a supply of 16 year old guys. It'll be a never ending supply of 16 year old guys. Maybe 35 year old uh, radio hosts, too. I'm no, there, to look there are that. many 16 year old guys that would recognize that as an unhealthy situation that would not go for it. More than would. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Nerd linger. No. And Please. Listen, I, I don't know a, any 16 year old guys. I was talking to an infectious disease guy last week and he was talking about the HIV rates and. It creeping into the younger age groups, and what happens? You're not seeing it disease uh, symptom wise, AIDS wise, for eight average of eight years. So somebody's 25, that means they got it when they were 17, and you mean you're ge- people are getting it and uh, nothing, not showing any signs for eight years? Right. Wow. I so, thought it was three to five. Well, it depends. It, it here's the scariest part. Mm-hmm. The the highest uh, infectivity that you achieve is within the first short period of time after you're infected. So you get infected with the virus, the virus starts growing and multiplying rapidly, and you're highly infectious. And at that point, even if you're tested, you're going to be negative until mm-hmm. your body starts making the antibody. So, and this is the time when people are usually continuing to be very promiscuous. And then when they, their body starts to make the antibodies, their viral load drops, drops off. Uh, and they can be tested positive, and this is usually three to six months. But that first three, four-month period is when a lot of people spread the, spread the virus. And in young people, again, if it's after uh, six hours from now, it's never going to happen. You know, the consequential thinking isn't there. So. Oh, the kids today, they think they're so invincible. John? Yeah. Uh, you're 14? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was, like, at a party yeah. a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. Never, like, tried acid before. When my friends, like, gave me a tab. I tried it, and, like, I was tripping out of my mind, and, like, I'm still, like, just, like, I'm still, like, it's still, like, affected. You're still tripping? Yeah. Oh, no! And, uh, how long ago did you take the tab? This is Friday. Friday. So, yeah, that's what they call an acid flashback. Yeah, or maybe it never went away. Yeah. I mean, it, like, went down for, like, party yesterday, and then just came back. Yeah, you know, we do uh, hear about this, John. And Drew uh, is always uh, a little bit frightened by it. But I don't know. Is this the first time you've done acid? Yeah. All right, so don't do it again. Well, how are you, are you feeling anxious now? Are you feeling real paranoid, yeah. frightened? Paranoid a little bit. Yeah. You know, if, first of all, 14 years old, your brain is not done setting up its uh, its pathways up there. And, and so what 
LSD does it's like throwing water on a circuit board. You just you just uh, that's why you see colors and you hear you know tracers and all that kind of stuff. But at 14, there's less stability in your nervous system to start with, and so it's going to take longer for you to come down. The, some people get what's called post uh, post hallucinogen uh, perceptive disorder, perception disorder, and they will have problems with they'll hear normal uh, levels of sound will sound deafening. Lights at normal uh, room level will seem extremely bright enough to wear sunglasses. And this can go on for months or even. Uh, years after they use uh, hallucinogens. So the reason Drew is e extremely uh, fearful and anxious when he hears about this stuff being used is because we can't control uh, the length of a trip. There's not... All right, so what should he do, though? He should go... See, you should go... See, I mean, really, uh, the anxiety... Well, when should that, he go? Right, should he give it he a couple to, more days? No, he should go probably to an emergency room now. Really? And talk to somebody. Because, yeah, yeah but what's going to happen? He's going to talk to a counselor. No, but what's going to happen if he doesn't? Well, you know, I mean, I, see, I don't want tripping. anyone to get hurt, but I, I do want to be realistic. You know, Drew always does this, you know, speak to your, speak to your neurologist and no. things like that. No, and I'm mm -hmm. like, Drew, listen. the guy's on Kaiser. If he's lucky, he doesn't know what a neurologist is. <laughs> no, no. The thing to do, your, your listen, neurologist. anybody out there, if you have a bad trip, and most people, you know, that are using acid know this, you, you need to be with somebody that's just going to sit with you and reassure you in a quiet place. You don't need to... Go to the police but and say, just, I did ask. He's just feeling know. out of it. No, he's well, he said he's feeling anxious, a little paranoid. At 14 years old, it's not mm -hmm. like you feeling paranoid and anxious, Adam. It's, a, it's, a, it's terrifying yeah. because there's not a lifetime of uh, bizarre activity such as you may have had <laughs> to uh, base the experience on. I don't so, uh, you, appreciate you referring to my deviant rituals as bizarre activity. Would you activity. like to refer to them for us? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a witness. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, the point uh, can't he can he hang out for a couple of days, see if the sy symptoms persist, and then if they do, the go to the emergency the room. For the I mean, I'm just why not? Okay, I, I'm saying he's not going to the emergency room tonight. I know he's not. Can I ask him a question? Oh, All great right. one! Hurry up, please. Oh. Controller of the board, John. Yeah. Okay. Do you have? Is there anybody uh, that you feel comfortable to sitting down and talking to? Have you been by yourself since this happened? What have you been doing? Mostly I've just been at home, like, watching TV and stuff. But, like, there's some of my friends. Yeah, there's the problem right yeah, there, man. Watching TV. Watch TV. Stop watching TV. Listen to Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, if you're going right to be, yeah, if you're gonna be tripping, you might as well, you know, have, have yeah. a good time at it. Yeah. You know, drink some tea and listen to Pink Floyd. Have you been able to sleep? Oh, uh, yeah, I've been able to sleep, but for some weird-ass dreams going on. Yeah. I, there right. need, I, an yeah. emergency room may be very threatening, difficult to get through when you're 14, but... To, to be able to sit down and talk about what's going on. Uh, he he is not going to go to the emergency room tonight. Okay. Well, so, maybe I'll go over and sit and talk to him on the phone or during a break or something. That's what will. he needs. He needs to just vent, talk about All it. Right, and well, all right. You can go do that now. Yeah, by I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it for the rest of the show. I don't think it's a good idea if I'm <laughs> leaving you in here with me. All right. You wanna, I, you'll talk to John during the break, yeah, right? I will. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I yeah. got to do coke with the band, otherwise I would <laughs> I'd go over there and talk to him myself, you know, because I, I do care about the kids. Ray? Hello? Ray, you're 18. What's up? Yeah. Uh, first off, I want to say that your show's quality. You know, that this one in the man show? Thank you. Yeah, they're both pretty bad. Uh, I have a question. Hold on, Bruce. Bad means good, you know? Yeah, well, I've seen the man show, so. Go ahead. <gasps> Oh, yeah. Doesn't bode with your Christian belief system. <laughs> I, I sort of down. like that. Yesterday when I was up uh, with all these other guys, we were blazing. And we were just talking. All one of them said, he goes, yeah, you can get infinite from smoking marijuana a lot, just like you can with cigarettes. And I was just curious if that was true. Uh, here's what I know from uh, doing this show. Apparently, it can uh, cigarettes and uh, maybe weed can affect uh, some of these little blood vessels that uh, supply the Pepe, but uh, that's not for many, many years. You can uh, whatever negative effects marijuana has, it'll it it'll, it will it will far outweigh the impotency risk. Huh? Yeah, you'll, you'll probably I mean, get a brain tumor first before. You know, you'll <laughs> well, you probably just can. not get a job or move out of the house. <laughs> Somebody probably get fat from eating too much. It, <laughs> it tells your body, it tells your brain and your testicles that there's more testosterone around than there is, so they stop making it. So you grow boobs and you uh, have your testicles shrink. And I guess the word you're blazing means you're smoking a lot of it every All day. Right. But uh, listen, here's here's the more immediate. He's a scare here, the Ray. Yeah, the addiction. Listen. 
all the guys I know smoke a lot of weed and always smoked a lot of weed are still living at home for the most part. And here's how <laughs> here's how it affects your erection. Uh, you can get an erection, but you're going to be the only one touching it. Because uh, <laughs> once you start getting your late 20s and early 30s, chicks just aren't turned on as much as they were about a guy who's still living at home mm. and, uh, you know, borrowing his mom's Vega wagon <laughs> to yeah. go down to the store and, you know, turning in uh, bottles for redemption value and that kind of stuff. To it, buy Twinkies. Yeah, it, it's buy really... Papers, yeah. It, it, all the guys I grew up with who smoked a lot of weed and continued to smoke a lot of weed are sort of in a little holding pattern. I don't know if they're unhappy. I don't... I no, don't, I, I mean, don't, hey... Can we do ask him what he thinks about what you're saying? And what I notice with my patients is when they're in the smoking phase, which can last till they're about 35 or 40, they are so <laughs> sure that there's no problem that the reason yeah, they're living at home with I their know. parents is because they're doing a benevolent act to keep their parents sane or, or oh, listen, I mean, with a roof over there. Eventually, keep with their parents' eye. My, <laughs> friends, <laughs> my friends are just waiting to turn the corner because they're like 34, 35, 36, right? Now, if they can stay at home just another two or three years, eventually your parents are living with you. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. yeah. you're living with your parents up until you're like 36, and then at a certain point, they're living with you yeah. because uh, they're 80 and you're taking care of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And people get that perception. You know, it's like when, when you hear a guy's 29, you go, oh, that loser's living with his mom. But if the guy's 39 or 49, you go, hey, that's a nice guy. He's taking his mom in. Meanwhile, he's still in his room with the Yoda sheet. <laughs> yeah. Mowing the yard for a salary. Yeah, he's got, yeah. But I'm sure he's this got a Ziffy board leaned up against the, <laughs> the wall this playing guy, Nintendo. If you ask him, he'll invite you over to the Ziffy board and sit in the room. He thinks it's great. I know. And, this, so it, there's this delusional thing when they smoke pot. They think, oh, this is wonderful. I'm, that, there is no let, let me tell you, the, listen, pot is not inherently evil. You can smoke pot once in a while, just like you can do anything once in a while. No big deal. It ain't going to kill you. It's not going to make your penis fall off. You're not going to grow breasts. Everything will be fine. But don't kid yourself. If you smoke out every day, you will be stunted emotionally and financially and in every other way. And it will eventually catch up to you. And if do you, you really want boobs? Right. You know, think about that. But on the other hand, if you're going to be at your folks' house in Stone, you might as well have some boobs. You know, how many... What are, <laughs> I would never leave that Drew, out. good point. You've yeah. been doing this how many years with Drew, and you don't, you don't hear... You say one time is going to hurt you. The person that smokes at that one time and gets that wonderful glow in their brain, and it's like, boom, something clicks, and from that day on, that's what they want to go back to doing yeah, but every single day. We're never going to talk anyone out of smoking it for the first time. Yes, you... Uh, listen, the, if right, the social... So stop. The preaching. I'm not it's preaching. So early into the show. I've got more to say. <laughs> oh, no. Nice rack. Grady. <laughs> Grady. Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. What's up there, Grady? Uh, I have a question for Wayne. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, on average, per day, how much hairspray do you use? <laughs> what, what would lead you to believe I use any hairspray at all? <laughs> I've seen you guys laugh a couple of times. Pretty crazy hair. Wayne, uh, Wayne, by the way, his hair sticks up a, uh, at its highest point. I'd say highest point of the hair from the highest point of the scalp, i got to go with about eight and a half, nine inches. Oh, thank you. And it's not, you know, it's not a spiky look. It's more like a cartoon scared look. <laughs> you know, in cartoons That's when they it, get right. frightened, it's like, oh, yeah, hair, yeah. hair goes straight up. That's it. I don't oh. think it's an unnatural look, though. I think it's, uh, it's it, becoming. It's, uh, it's it becoming. works. Yeah, I like it. But he, obviously something is holding it up there. Well, you know, I can't really tell you because, you know, the few people that have found out in the past have turned up missing. <laughs> Grady's worried about you, so he doesn't want to divulge that, all right? <laughs> all right. All right. We're concerned. But listen, you know, not everybody, I don't know, don't some people use, like, toothpaste in their hair? and oh, um, egg white. We've heard, them, yeah. I've heard just about everything. A, a myriad of, you know, toothpaste and dirt mixture you know people people always want to tell me too like how i should do my hair like oh you should try seven up <laughs> like well do i look like i need to try seven up <laughs> I know. no it ain't going anywhere <laughs> it is uh but i mean you don't sport that look all the time do you um every morning do you wake up and uh, deal with that when we're, when we're on tour i do it every day 
Oh yeah, I mean, if you're going to play, every I mean, day, if I'm right? just sitting around the house, no, I don't do it. You know, no, just uh, just curlers and pink slippers. Yeah, <laughs> that's what <laughs> I do. Pink curlers, pink, <laughs> pink curlers, pink, pink slippers. fuzzy bathrobe. Yeah, <laughs> actually, he's like that on the tour bus too. Yeah. We're trying to get him to quit <laughs> with the uh, cotton balls between the <laughs> toes. Right. Yeah. Why don't you ask Adam to take his hat off? All right. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, well, uh, listen. Uh, if I take this hat off, I'm going to hit you like the uh, skipper <laughs> hits Gilligan. <laughs> you understand? Okay, skipper. Okay, <laughs> little buddy. <laughs> I want. Uh, why don't hey, you go? You uh, why don't Ooh, you go? Look at uh, your hair. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna uh, take a little break. Static X uh, is here. Uh, when we come back, we'll speak to uh, David, who's fourteen. He wants to know if there's any way to uh, speed up the uh, puberty process. We'll uh, <laughs> figure out how he can yeah. hurry up and get some hair on his back. Adam's elixir. <laughs> Adam, we know uh, how much the ladies enjoy that uh, after this. Right back with more. It's a love line. I'm Adam Corolla. That is uh, Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew, and uh, he showed up with his game face on tonight. Mm-hmm. It's not the uh, it's not the lovable bumbling Dr. Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I know and, and tolerate. This is a new Dr. Bruce. He's uh, he's on his game. He's uh, picking calls, and taking numbers. Like I like 40, that. Forty packs of sugar stacked up on the table. There, you mm-hmm. ready to go? Oh right. yeah, he's wired. But I didn't snort him this time. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, Tony, and Ken are all here from uh, Static X. We will uh, hear something off of uh, Wisconsin Death Trip, their uh, CD, which, uh, as I stated before, has just gone gold. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. We'll take a call, and then we'll uh, hear something off that CD. David? Yeah. So you want to know if there's any way to speed up the puberty process? Yeah. Uh, why? That's... Uh, just like not me and my friends want to know. Well, d- who, uh, you want your penis to grow? Uh... Like hair and all that stuff. Yeah, and you just you sort of interested in becoming a man a little quicker, right? Oh uh, yeah. All right, Bruce, steroids? Oh um, no, there's no way to there's no way to speed this process up. If you take steroids, you you probably delay it and. Uh, it's set. not like a pill or anything. No, this is hey, one uh, of the miracles. Hold on, of hold on a second, Wayne. I mean, uh, David. Yeah. We're living in a wonderful time, but it's not that goddamn wonderful. Like pills for everything. You know, they don't have a pill that help you get into puberty. How old are you? And if they did, they wouldn't give it to you. (laughs) (laughs) Troublemaker. How how old are you guys, all your friends? Uh, 14, 15, 16. Why do you want to grow up so fast? Yeah, live with it, man. I mean, I know it's tough, but yeah, trust us. You know, being an adult ain't all it's cracked up to be. No. Sucks. Yeah. I think it's great. But you, you spe- can do what you want. I got a hair in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get hair in your ears? Yeah. yeah. No, I, do, I mean, you know, we can, as soon as you turn twenty, you're gonna have to go buy clippers and stuff to like clipper all that excess hair. Yeah. You, you know, your 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 whole your whole body becomes like some sort of. Um, uh, it, yeah, it's like yeah. It's got, I was gonna say it's like some kind of yard, uh, you know, some sort of estate that you need a, a gardener to go yeah. over. And uh, the second uh, the gardener doesn't show up for a week or two, and the whole place just goes to hell. Yeah, stuff growing out of your nose, your ass, your ears. It's a mess. Mm. My uh, balls look like the uh, chin of an old Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Got to clip that every once in a while. I'll step on it if I don't. Say, uh, <laughs> if you really want some more hair, you know, just like eat lots of potatoes. And... I think I think he's looking for more. I think he's looking for biceps more than he uh, is hair. And it's kind of weird because, you know, it's funny. Like at high school, like when kids are like fifteen and sixteen, like I remember some dudes had. Some guys were like skinny as a rail and had a you know big Adam's apple and I'm guessing like Dr. Bruce <laughs> they were pretty much just all nose and teeth and the wind could blow them on. They're essentially women without a vagina. Mm-hmm. And then there were dudes that were coming in about two thirty with a goatee. Yeah. And it's like you're both fifteen and a half. Mm-hmm. The one dude is uh, two hundred thirty pounds. He's got a goatee, and the other guy is going you know buck fifteen and he looks like one of the Mandrell sisters. <laughs> And it's a little <laughs> cruel because eventually everyone will get caught up. But some guys make a move a little earlier than others. I mean, do you remember those guys who were like big and hairy and stuff yeah. when you, they were yeah. like 14, 15 years old? I used to want to be like that so I could buy beer. 
<laughs> yeah, that was the dude who bought yeah, beer. That was my yeah. advantage. Uh, yeah. I was that guy. <laughs> the, the beer, You're like the big beer hairy fetching. beer guy. Yeah. <laughs> that was me. Hey, when you when you bought beer, was there like one liquor store with some sort of bizarre ethnicity who was behind the counter who you knew you could get the beer from if you sent the hairy dude in? Yeah. So you'd go oh, to that yeah. liquor store. Oh, totally, yeah. We'd bizarre to ethnicity. Yeah. Yeah. What's bizarre ethnicity? The well, ninety-year-old redneck. What, 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 no, 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 the, no, I'm talking <laughs> about. I'm afraid we're going down a different road. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ethnicity I'm talking about is that uh, one you can't put a finger on. I call it the uh, Johnny Quest villain <laughs> ethnicity. <laughs> Not quite sure. It could be Korean, uh, Japanese, Chinese, a little Asian, but it's got a little, a uh, little, little Eastern European Eastern, in there yeah. and a little mi- middle. Eastern don't know what he is. All you know is he don't know what you are either. Right. All he knows is you got some hair on you and you got a tin in your hand right. and he's giving you the beer. Oh, mm-hmm. he, that, he not only would give me beer, he'd, he'd help me carry it to the counter. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that's uh, okay. Now full, that's service. Full service. That's service. Liquor store. Yeah. Think about. <laughs> 90, what, think 90. about what kind of effort it was to get a six pack. First of all, it's like everybody had to ante up. Oh, yeah. You couldn't oh, buy yeah. your own oh, six yeah. pack. Yeah. It was like nine guys going in on it. Everyone was in for you know buck. Then you either had to go to drive across town, go to the liquor store with the weird Johnny Quest ethnicity, yeah. or you had to stand out front and tell some old some dude guy, who yeah. was going to walk in was mm. going to go buy it right. for you. And that was always. Uh, that was always a little dicey because you'd give the guy ten bucks, he'd give you a buck fifty change, and he'd give you five <laughs> beers back. Like, hey, uh, it's nineteen seventy eight. Tell me a six pack of Miller is that eight fifty? <laughs> and then and there's you, only five. And he usually said something like, "It was all they had. Yeah, it, it was it, all you could afford." Yeah, he pretty much give you a look like, "What are you gonna do? Right. Kick my ass? <laughs> Go back and play with your uh, pogs, you yeah. little punks." All right, so uh, what the hell? Let's listen to something from uh, Static X. Yes, that's uh, that's ah, no. that's what I wanted to say. Man, get the get the fans pumped up. Uh, this is off uh, Wisconsin Death Trip. That's the uh, name of the CD, and this track is called Push It. I don't know what that song is about, but I know you're going to hell. 
Static X is our uh, guest tonight. That was uh, just them. They'll be out with uh, Power Man uh, 5000. And uh, if you're any fan of the show, you'll know that uh, they were on the show last week. I'll uh, tell you where you can find them, but uh, not just yet. We'll uh, take ourselves another call. Kyle? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Hey, man, I'm from the Valley, too. All right. What part? Uh, West Hills. I, like, I go to El Camino. Oh, yeah. They used to kick our ass when we played them in football. Oh, man, you're the... Sorry. Well, watch oh, the F word, yeah. man. Sorry, you're the coolest, though. Uh, and thanks. I just like to say, Bruce, any 16-year-old would do the threesome, man. Yeah. So. Especially you, right, Kyle? You know it, man. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Kyle, let me tell you, let me uh, give you your, your uh, two- or three-year mission. Get out of high school and move from the West Hills. Yeah, dude. You're telling me. Oh, I hate that There's dump. To do. <laughs> that is a dump. <laughs> oh, and it's hotter than hell during the summer, and everyone's ugly, and it, it, it sucks. I hate the valley. <laughs> what a dump. So you're telling them you shouldn't have a threesome there because everybody's ugly? Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to have a threesome, don't do it in the valley. <laughs> yeah, there now, you the, go. the women from the valley are good looking, but they're, uh, they're stupid, but they're good looking. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, everyone, people from the <laughs> valley are good looking. They're just dumb. You know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like too many, too many, uh, like bovine growth ster- hormone in the McDonald burgers. <laughs> I don't know what it, wow. what it, what it does, <laughs> but, uh, it, the people, the women have, you know, big racks at 13 years old. Everyone's good looking. It's just the dumbest stumps over there. All right, Kyle. The callous emergency. Okay, dude. I like whack off a whole lot. Cool. And yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> And, like, then you get my high. Johnson is, like, chapped almost. I don't know. It's all, like, dry. And uh, right. You might want to use some lubrication. Do you use, help. Are you, you use lotion when you do it? No. Nah. You're there going you for go. the dry run, huh? Yeah, because, like, I don't know. I don't like to clean up stuff. You don't well, like to clean up stuff? Nah, you kind of have to at the end, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, do you, what comes out of your <laughs> confetti? <laughs> So that'd be rad, wouldn't it? Can silly string. Out of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, man, that silly string would be awesome. <laughs> I know. Especially around New Year's. You know, I mean, really use that penis for something. Once mm. again, I would never leave the house. Hey, uh, Kyle? Yeah? yeah? You need to, uh, why, why, how many times a day are you good for? Well, on the weekdays, it's usually like three times, and on the weekends, it's anywhere from like four to seven. All right, that's, uh, that's, wow. that's a pretty healthy average. But, you know, he's 16, he's from the Valley. He's are you, probably are you, about average. Are you sexually active? Uh, no. No, who has okay. time so with then, that busy man? <laughs> <no. laughs> See if he can squeeze a woman yeah. in between his 6th uh, and 7th on Saturday. <laughs> I'm a little tired. <laughs> okay. So, and Rick, believe me, you know, after you're done having yourself for like the 6th time, uh, a couple of supermodels could walk in nude and you'd be like, honey, you're blocking the set. Get out of the way. <laughs> Come on. What do you think this is? He's got to use a little lubrication. I think it, maybe he should slow down a little, mm. and he should use a little uh, lubrication. Right. I'm less concerned as he has not exposed his uh, organ to the environment. No, he, he hasn't seen anything but his hand. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But he's. I don't know why he talks away. Just, ah, that's a little. A little he's from the valley. There. Oh, maybe he's from the valley. Stupid. Okay. I think he just strained himself. Yeah. <laughs> and Liz, and uh, I, I swear, don't don't uh, be careful. Not everything is a good lubricant. That's what I want to say. Uh, you know, Prell, different, <laughs> different, yeah, you, all guys have had you, a run-in with shampoo. Guys think anything that's liquid is a lubricant, yeah, and uh, that's when they run into trouble. Uh, avoid vapor rub at all costs. <laughs> that's right. <Vicks>. <laughs> Sarah? Yeah? You're 17. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I have a question because I want to know why my boyfriend dumped me. After one month, I think it's because I had oral sex with him on the third date, but I wanted to know, was that a part of it? I mean, he broke up with me because he told it, told me that I was just too different, but I want to know what that means, like in guy terms. I don't understand. Mm, well, most I, guys, uh, I mean, it's not most guys, you know, strategy to break up with people that provide plenty oh, of oral yeah. sex. Uh-huh. At least, uh, How no, old no guy I know. How huh? old is he? How old was he? Oh, he's the same age as me, 17. And uh, you say different. How are you different? Well, I mean, we're different because he's, I don't know, he's into computers, and I'm, like, more into politics, and he's kind of, I don't know, we were, like, different. I'm from Northern California. He's from Southern California. 
I used to play a lot of jokes with him, like, oh, North is better than South. And yeah. I guess he didn't like that, and I was really oh, happy. No, no, he doesn't <laughs> care about any of that. You know, war well, started he told me. I don't no, know. he just he just tired and wants to break up, that's all. Has he, has he had sex yet uh, further than oral sex? No, have I have you first. Have and you? that he wants to wait till marriage. Right, have you had uh, oh, okay. intercourse? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I was almost ready to do it with him. I'm glad I didn't, but I almost did. Yeah. And I don't know, was it, I, I had oral sex with him on the third day, but I don't know, was that, like, part of it? Like, the reason? I don't well, know. Well, he, he's probably him? a little more conservative than you, but I would I would w really chalk this one up to the whole part, the whole Northern Southern California thing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's a pretty big hurdle to get over. <laughs> they talk about the difficulties of interracial dating, but they never talk about being from the northern right. part of a state and the southern part of the yeah. state, and you can't get past that, whether... What are, whether we're talking about Iowa, New Jersey, or California, someone well, from the north, the other guy from the south, it's a civil war. Right. That's really yeah. what's going on. Well, there. just never date anybody but from it, New Jersey anyway. But. It's a great example. <laughs> I mean, it's a great example of what it means to be 17. Those kind of things, it sounds really uh, quite right. ridiculous what attracts one person to the other, and that's why it's not a good no. idea to start having sex, and All which right. really attaches oh, boy. people. Listen, calm down with the uh, anti-sex message for a second. No, yeah, I'm right? saying... Let me just say this because we got to go to break. When you somebody wanna... breaks up with you, especially when you're 16, 17 years old, they just want to break up. Right. Mm -hmm. They can say it's because you're into computers and I'm into politics or whatever nonsense right. they want to put forward. But the bottom line is, is don't question it. They want to break up. Get over right. it. Move on. Do you even want and a chance of those two having a baby. That's quiet what I'm down. Saying. They don't. All right. want to be happy. We're going to attempt to have a baby in the parking lot after the, after the show. <laughs> well, and you're you're only, you, yes. you'll be delivering it, buddy. Uh, right. <laughs> out of your own. I will be just delivering Just like the alien right I out of your own. I will be delivering person. the mail. Yeah. Don't you worry. You just hold <laughs> still. The mailman coming. <laughs> you just hang on to the towel bar. <laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll be back after the this. The towel bar be up your... All right, oh. calm down now. Come on. What about your Hippocratic code? We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. We'll be right back. Line. Wayne, Tony, and Ken are all here from Static X. They're uh, going to be uh, doing a little tour with uh, Power Man 5000. I'll uh, give the dates uh, in the 11 o'clock hour. We'll also uh, hear something uh, else off uh, the Wisconsin Death Trip CD. Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew, 1-800-LVE-191. Uh, Snoop Dogg later on uh, in the week. So you'll want to yeah. uh, check that out. <laughs> Uh, in the hail. In the hails. And uh, Mark is uh, 16 and uh, on the phone. Mark? Uh, yeah, I'm 18, actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it says that. I just screwed it up. Okay. Um, yeah, I got these, these two, like, white sores in my mouth. Actually, I get them, like, kind of frequently. And they're, like, kind of, like, pitted out, and they hurt really bad. And I don't know what they are, but I don't know what I can do to get rid of them. But, uh, it's not like canker sores. Have you had a doctor look at them? They're kind of like canker sores, I guess. No, I haven't had them looked at, but they're like reoccurring, you know. Yeah, canker sores commonly are, and, and I've heard you can like take like lysine and stuff to make them better, but yeah, and really helped. And I've had the ones I have right now. I've had for like four or five days, and they're not going away, and uh, they're really painful. Right. At, there are various. I've read articles where they advocate gargle, uh, swishing tetracycline in your mouth. I mean, not that I'm ad advising you to do that, but they're whenever they're multiple. Uh, very diverse treatments for something. Usually, there's not one treatment that works real well, and uh, so it, it, the the important thing though is there are different things that can cause sores in your mouth, and you should have somebody look at it because, as with your skin, any kind of lesion really has to be visualized and sometimes cultured. Sometimes take a scraping of it to tell exactly what's uh, what's causing it, and uh, the treatment would be very different or if it were a virus, because it's thought that... Why, who's he go to? Like a ear, nose, and throat guy? Really a family practitioner, internist, or emergency department. It's not... Uh, a, don't not go the, to the emergency right, room. Right, I know, and I'm not advocating that, but I mean, very commonly, yeah, about half of what we see is not an emergency. So. Yeah, 
Now that's, uh, I mean, you work at the ER. Half the people in there shouldn't be in there, right? Yeah. Three or there, quarters. Or there's some psychiatric uh, underlying, underpinnings. Uh, but that... do you see them in order of importance? The yes. Severity? Yeah. yeah. And who figures that out? Because uh, the triage nurse. Can can we? Uh, can she be bought? No. I mean, <laughs> well, it's, I mean, uh, can we grease her palm just a little bit? What's she making uh, nurse, it? Nurse, this really hurts. Uh, well, yeah. Go. And then if you have the... And she's like, how bad? And you're like, reaching yeah. a wall. And it hurts about 40 bucks. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> and then, of course, the radio runs when the mm. ambulance calls come in. Those bypass the, the triage nurse, and they come back to the... Yeah, see, to me, it's like I, I've been to the emergency room a few times, and I want it to be first come, first serve. I don't mm -hmm. care if I got a splinter in my big toe and some guy comes in riddled with bullet holes it's like yeah. buddy i've been here for two hours there's lots mm -hmm. of you guys can just like sit you. down and bleed until i get my splinter taken out here's a sponge sit here, down yeah here's <laughs> here's some bed sheets make yourself a tourniquet <laughs> oh man I, always, I used to go to nothing but like free clinics and you know uh, county usc and stuff yeah. oh, oh yeah. you just sit there for hours while people die next to you and you know hobos <laughs> vomit up <laughs> stuff i mean it's such a it is just, old oh it is <laughs> i i went to i went to emergency room once uh with a, a throat that was so swollen and so red that i really I was having trouble breathing and stuff and i sat there for about two hours and i basically i did a limp <laughs> home all right Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, I want bitch. some cheese to go with that wine. <laughs> ryan <laughs> oh a point is i got up and left you guys were so slow <laughs> Yeah. Ryan, you're 23. Yeah. What's up? Uh, well, I've got a kind of a situation. Um, my girlfriend can have an orgasm in 30 seconds when she's in the bathtub under the nozzle, you know? Right. But, but would I, you know, I could, I could do just about anything you ask and, you know, no dice. She right. called last time I was here. Really? Yeah. What? Hey, Ryan? Yeah. Hang on a second. All right. Okay. So, um, the situation is a uh, girlfriend masturbates in the tub, has an orgasm in uh, 30 seconds. Uh, with Ryan, he does everything, including oral sex, Ryan? Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Yeah, nothing? Nothing. Well, I mean, it, it, she says she gets close, but, you right. know, she can't. Close but no cigar, huh? Yeah. Yeah. How's how's the size of the cigar, by the way? Just, yeah, <laughs> I'm saying, just out of curiosity. It's, it's, it's fair. I mean, it's, I, I'm, you know, That's nothing. A, a fair on the radio means small. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> hey, you're on the radio. You guys are going jumbo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, who's oh, going to call you? Huh? <laughs> yeah, you want me to put it on? <laughs> it's in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it bats a lot of college basketball, so it's in the next room watching Sports Center. But uh, I think I can coax it back in here if I hold like, you know, if I hold some food out or something, mm -hmm. I can leave a trail of uh, popcorn. It should come back. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a little uh, break, and when we come back, we'll uh, talk to Ryan, see if we can figure we out a way to uh, give uh, give his uh, yeah, gal an orgasm. Static X is here. We'll be back after that. Back once again with it. Love Line. Love Line. The Bam Crow and Dr. Drew will be right back before you know it. Love line. We're going to take ourselves just a little 10 second break and we'll be back with more of the program in just 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. All right, it's uh, back with more Love Line. Dr. Bruce is uh, filling in for Dr. Drew, but don't worry, he's uh, perfectly qualified. Static X is our uh, guest tonight. And we're not qualified. Wayne, but they <laughs> sure are qualified to rock. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, Tony, and uh, Kent. Hey, that's a, na that's a good name for an album. <laughs> qualified to rock. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like one of those like, late-night compilations. <laughs> yeah. Well, Only like... available through the special TV hour. <laughs> Speaking of compilations, we are on a KTEL compilation now. Yeah. Oh, yeah are you? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. called Qualified to Rock. <laughs> no, uh, it's called, like, it's got some evil name, like, Grinding Through, uh, well, I don't know what it's called. Grinding. It's got, like, a bunch of heavy bands on it. But Grinding I was, I thought it was pretty cool we got asked to be on KTEL. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was when I first heard of Black Sabbath. It was on a KTEL company. Yeah, but if you remember right, all those KTEL things, they were all at different speeds or whatever. You could play oh, it and yeah. you'd be like, uh, why, why doesn't this sound like Black Sabbath? Yeah. Well, they used to <laughs> cover the song. Yeah. So, so that yeah. so that the band so that the song sounded sometimes they did that sort of close, but it sound but it, there was something a little bit off, and you realize yeah. it was the same band doing all the songs. Yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, I think they've done away with that. I think the uh, the population has demanded that. And Static X can be found on uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember what it's grind, called. Grinding through the grinding. millennium, or, uh, <laughs> grind your lines. heads. Uh, I don't know. You uh, know what I like about, about those commercials is when they do. The uh, when they do them, they have like a bunch of actors who are sort of uh, would be at the club that that band would right, be right. playing at, except for it's never quite right. It, there's not enough of them. The budget yeah. isn't high enough. Yeah, I always totally. just think just just show us the goddamn songs yeah. so we can either buy it or not and go home. I don't need to see other people enjoying it to then realize I might enjoy it as well. You know that's what <laughs> that's what commercials do that with everything. Like they they do like whenever they do like a cold commercial, they got someone sneezing and stuffed mm-hmm. up. They're miserable. I'm mm-hmm. aching, and I'm thinking to myself, would we? Do they think we're not going to know what a cold is unless we see somebody with a cold, or do we actually think this actor has a cold? What are <laughs> they trying to What are they trying to convey? You know what I mean? Like I've had a stuffed up nose with congestion and achiness and fever, and. I'll take their product if right. it works on that. I don't need to see someone who's stopped up in achy. Although, you got to admit, it would be pretty funny to have a beer commercial if there was just somebody really wasted. <laughs> 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 just like cans laying around yeah. him, and he's watching Before wrestling. And after, yeah. It really, it, it, th- that's, a, that's a very good point, because it's the only commercial where they don't ex- it, mm-hmm. absorb yeah. the product. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I would buy a beer if I thought it got me loaded <laughs> yeah. better, and, and that should be an angle. Yeah, Screw really. where the water comes from, or the mm-hmm. the uh, choice hops, or the yeah. barley. I want should, one that gets you after. That's it. It yeah, should say. They should yeah. be pushing the alcohol. Coming. Yeah. What about the gal Joe's walking beer to the really guy's house drunk. with a six pack? I'm always thinking. The what? There's a woman knocking. Yeah, the, the hot right. looking chick who shows yeah. up at the apartment with right. the six pack. Right. Thinking what? A, well, first of all, the hot woman. Shows up at anybody's house in real life. She's going to get in for free. She doesn't have to bring the six pack. I mean, <laughs> no, yeah. she she can bring a bucket of vomit. We're yeah, I mean, oh, come on in. Hey, yeah. brought the vomit. Yeah. Great, yeah. set that, that down. down. Yeah. <laughs> Beer's right over there. <laughs> the, the other good thing in beer commercials is is they act like there's just one six pack and you got to get it. Meaning, <laughs> I bought this six pack. I put on. Now my roommate, he's outside. And we're on the third story, and he's on a trampoline, and he's going to bounce off the roof of the neighboring building to try to get up to the third story to grab it. It's like, hey, how about you just go down to the Circle K, yeah. plop down three bucks, and get your own six pack? Mm-hmm. It's always that one six pack. He wants yeah. my beer. Well, you know, much I'm like put the, a guard by the refrigerator so he won't get it. <laughs> much like the uh, North South thing a while ago, many civil wars have started because of a six pack of beer. I, I think you could you could go to work for one of these companies. Really <laughs> Wisconsin uh, Death Trip is the uh, name of the CD. Static X is a band. You know we'll, uh, yeah, we'll I'll go to that one because well, take it's a, a segue. Uh, take a take a uh, call for the band. Derek. Hey. Hey. Adam, I just gotta say one thing. The man shows awesome, and you're my role model. Thank you. Hey, what about me? Yeah, you too. Yeah. Uh, Static you. X, you're awesome. And I want to know how'd you guys get your name. Um, it's really hard to come up with a, a name. It seems like all the, the good ones have been taken. It took us a long time to come up with that name, but, um, we just took the word static just because we thought it was a cool word and, and, um, it kind of has two, two meanings. It could mean something as static when it's just totally still, or it could just mean like chaos, like, sh- you know, like static on the radio or something. Yeah. And, um, the X, you know, it just sounds cool. It's like extreme or experimental. And it means no guitar solos. X out the guitar solos. <laughs> All right, Derek. <clears throat> okay. You playing a band? Uh, no, I'm trying to make one now. All right, let me give you the name of uh, the band once you start it. All right. Okay. Uh, if it's a heavy metal band. Okay. Narthex. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, no one has used it to the best of my knowledge, and that's just a rocking <laughs> band. Yeah. Narthex. It's 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 supposed to be. I think it's the name of uh, the cross, like where it crosses. You know where the where the. Uh, the where the intersection, the intersection on the on the crosses, mm. mm. that's what I hear, and that is heavy. Mm. That is, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know they rock that right. narthex. Nimrod. <laughs> Michelle. Yeah. You're 16. 
15. I'm sorry. I keep doing that tonight. It's okay. What's up? Um, well, I'll tell you what happened. Um, I was at my boyfriend's house tonight, and I was, we were laying on his bed, and he was fingering me, and my arms went numb. They fell asleep. And we weren't, like, in a position where he was cutting off the circulation of my arm or I was in an awkward position. I was flat on my back. Mm-hmm. It's like one of those um, Spock-like pressure points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How long did that last? Um, well, actually, it was only he was only going at it for about five minutes, and then we got interrupted by his little brother knocking on the door. Oh, so, so I had to stop, and I figured out because I'm all I can't button up my shirt. My arms are numb. Both or, arms. Yeah, both. Yeah. Now, were you? You're uh, hyperventilating. Yeah. Were you? Were you uh, enjoying yourself? Yeah, it was like actually my first time. Were you getting close to uh, orgasm? Um, I don't think so, but. Which it was going on for about four or five minutes, and then my arms just went numb. Yeah, because, you know, see, some, sometimes when people are getting into sex, their breathing changes, they hyperventilate, and then their extremities kind of go numb. Sometimes even go uh, temporarily blind. Wow. Yeah. Well, I wasn't hyperventilating. I was breathing a little bit harder, but... Well, hyperventilating is not something you're conscious of. Many people that hyperventilate, you have to show them an actual measurement of the gases in their blood for them to believe it. So it's not something that you have to be... <laughs> that's right. panting, not panting, but it's it's you're getting rid of carbon dioxide in your blood more efficiently than normal. Dropping that level changes the, some of the... <laughs> Who's that? I've never heard that sound before. What was that? That's somebody that's in the other room. I think. Is that what a woman sounds like? And she's Interesting. Yeah. How, how old's your boyfriend? He's 15, too. Mm. Okay. All right. So, uh, Michelle, it was probably that. Uh, yeah. So it's normal and everything? Yeah, I would pass the dangerous radio doctor. I think it's okay. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, take it easy. Try not to any breathe Any tingling around time. your lips or... And just remember, his arm's probably numb, too, now, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Michelle. Hey, thanks. That's what that is, right? Yeah. All right. Now, uh, I forgot to get back to, uh... Ryan, by the way, pardon me for uh, belching, uh, who's 23... And I uh, was talking about his girlfriend who has an orgasm in 30 seconds when she's in the tub under the water, right? Right. But uh, when she's with you, when she's, uh, when she's uh, topside on land, uh, nothing, right? Yeah. Well, not, not nothing. I mean, she says she gets close, but she can't finish otherwise. Right. And uh, there's a fair amount of women who do this, and they, they never seem to have any trouble in the tub, though. I love that. No, not at all. Women love the tub. I don't even think it's the water. I was talking about this last week. I think it's just the tub. They love the ins, you know, the, the uh, feel of the cold porcelain. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> no women. You know, they they w- women like go shopping and go. Oh, that'd be good in the tub. <laughs> Look at that for the tub. <laughs> yeah, we'll put that in the tub. I'll yeah. put that next to the tub. I'll put that in the tub. I'll dump some of these oils into the tub. It's gonna be great. Some oh, it's gonna around, smell good. Yeah, yeah. and then I'm gonna light some candles and get in the tub. That's why Bed Bath & Beyond is so huge right now. <laughs> that in this case, she's, a, she's able to stimulate the specific <clears throat> place that she knows works, and she's doing it herself, and she's probably been doing this for a long time and gotten very good at it. And how long have you been going out with her? About six months. Okay, so she, how's the relationship? I mean, you getting no, along the well relationship, otherwise. The relationship is really good. So maybe she needs to stop doing that for a while and work on the uh, technique with you. Okay. Can you, right. Why don't you go in there and watch her? Yeah. And oh well, else, that, that's know? well. You know, I I have, and I've you know, and that is really good, and I you know have a good time with that, but it's just not quite the same. Yeah. Well, it, the well, problem, I mean, you watch her to learn wh- where exactly she's stimulating herself, and then, yeah. then you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Turn the hose on her. Yeah. yeah. In this case, we know yeah, the think, mechanical uh, everything's working, so that's good. yeah. But the problem with the water is, is you know, I could see if she was manually stimulating herself with her fingers or something, and you could go, all right, well, there's a sweet spot. I'll just go ahead and sort of replicate that with my finger or my tongue or whatever it is I'm using. But water, it's kind of, it, it's kind of hard to compete with that because you can never really replicate that. Well, you that. should at least go in there and, and be a part of what she's doing and enjoy it, and then if she needs to finish off with that, then, then that's all good. You know? How does she feel? Is she real concerned about it, or is uh, she just watching your... Frustration. I put him on hold. Oh, you put him on hold. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. who cares? Wes? Yo. You're 15. Yeah, um, on Saturday, um, me and my girlfriend decided to have sex. And, like, when time came up, 
like after I caught them on and everything, I couldn't get it up. And uh, did did you were you up before you tried to put the condom on? No, I was like the whole time like during I was trying to get it up. She's like I, I was like I asked my friend, you know, he was sitting outside. And I was like, dude, how do you get it up? I'm like, she's like <laughs> dude, you're dirty, man. You're dirty. I was like, wait a minute, your friend was standing yeah. outside while you yeah, he didn't want to go out. I said, dude, you can like come in here and watch or whatever. He's like, dude, you're dirty. You're dirty. And he, he sat outside and just like got McDonald's and stuff. Um. Your friend was outside of the room while you were trying to uh, lose your virginity. Yeah. And uh, how was your girlfriend with him being outside the room that way? She was cool. She's me. Like she's she's like not a virgin, but like she like like done pornos and stuff before. How old is she? She's fourteen. Oh, and lovely. she's done pornos. Hmm. Yeah. You know, listen, what do you mean? What do you mean she's done pornos before? Well, she she, she claims she's done one of them before, and like her friend was videotaping. And she's like okay with like people looking and stuff when we're doing it oh boy so she was molested on on tape that's that's great maybe we could find the film and do something about it but listen I'll try to sell it or something yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah doctors don't I'm, do things I'm like that. on the internet <laughs> especially if it's autographed oh, yeah like, we can get like we get like 20 bucks on ebay yeah. <laughs> listen wes i mean sex is a you know a wonderful thing and it should be part of a committed relationship and uh it sounds like you're your brain and your penis is a little smarter than the one upstairs in this case because it knows not to uh, proceed with the uh, yeah. with the functional. Your little head smarter than your big. Yeah. Head. Well, it's certainly it's certainly scared and confused. Right. I don't and, know how smart it is. <laughs> okay. Well, need it. But Wes, you, you know a lot of problems here. I mean, your girl, this girl has real problems, and you're just contributing to it. You mm-hmm. just want to lose your virginity. That's the only reason for the act. It's you know well, not the way. Maybe he loves her. Do you love her, Wes? Well, you can say that. She's been through a lot, and I've been through the same things. And All right. Like, yeah. Yeah, have you been to a counselor? Have you ta- I mean, really, it's losing your virginity. It's, are you, you watch a movie, and it's like it's a big joke, but it's a serious thing, and it takes a lot of, uh, you know, your nervous system has to have a lot of things going correctly for the, uh, for the plumbing to work, so to speak. And it's, it maybe it's just saying, hey, this isn't the right time. This isn't the right place. This isn't the right person. Hey, uh, Wes? Yeah. yeah, don't freak yourself out too much, though, because it's never going to work. It's I mean, got nothing to do with... Uh, you have His no... penis is never going to work. Listen, I, <laughs> here's the deal. Y- you got about a 50-50 chance of your Johnson um, going along with the plan your first time out of the <laughs> shoot. You Really, it's a coin toss. About 50-50. Yeah. Here's the problem. If it doesn't work the first time, the second time, it's now 90-10. Because mm-hmm. it had that bad experience the first time. I mean, if you didn't get it up the first time, the second time, you ain't going to get it up for sure. I don't mm-hmm. know why uh, the penis has to uh, sort of uh, have this attitude problem, but it seems to. We mm-hmm. talk to guys like this uh, all the time. It, the the last encounter they have is weighing into the next encounter. And like if it, it was successful, they go in with a certain amount yeah. of momentum. And if well, it it's wasn't... Like, it's like it feels depressed because of its past failure and <laughs> it doesn't want to even attempt it the second time around. Yeah. Right, it, it's not a confident penis. Right. But this is a tragic situation, really. I mean, this 14-year-old okay. girl has been in a porno film. That is that is horrible. That's a molestation. Well, I, really. she hasn't. Here's well, what whatever. happened. One yeah, of her somebody friends videotaped well, I mean, her, yeah. but she shouldn't be, you know, who knows who she's having sex with, and she's, this guy just wants to lose his virginity. It's... And by the way, with uh, everybody having a video camera and a VCR these days, uh, just about everyone's been. Isn't in everybody yeah, I know. being <laughs> I know it. being one? Me. I mean, you think about it though. When you're 16 years old, 15 years old, you get yourself a girlfriend. You start getting it on, and uh, there's a camcorder in the next room. Mm-hmm. I mean, do the math. It's going to happen. Yeah, but it's going to happen the more and more. Video storm by it. That's a different story. Well, that's yeah. true too. Yeah. Well, I think they just taped it, but I think uh, uh, one of the other things that we forgot to tell this kid, too, is I think he was worried about the condom actually being the, the cause of the problem of him not being able to get it up, and that dude, probably was make sure cause. you have a condom. That, oh, I mean, yes. That's not it. You were just you were just nervous. It's your first yeah. time. There's a lot to be nervous about. Your friend is sitting outside the door listening. It's just, that's right. you, know, you were just nervous. Don't worry yeah. about it. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, next time, mm-hmm. just like try it without your friend outside or something you know you know what i tell people i know this sounds ridiculous and most of the things i say sound ridiculous but this is one of my good ideas along with the uh um, venereal crotch sniffing dogs that i'm gonna train (laughs) these are the two things i'm very passionate about this what i'm talking about is 
Guys should, especially guys that are, you know, kind of in the rookie phase with the ladies who plan on putting a condom on, they got a beautiful boner going the whole night. Then it's stop. Let me put the condom on. Uh Uh-oh, the penis isn't cooperating. The night's screwed up. I would practice putting the condom on when I was alone. I would take three or four condoms. I'd put them on the side of the bed. And uh, for a few nights before I went to bed when I was having at myself, I'd stop right in the middle, put the condom on, and keep going. That way, the penis gets used to stopping, having the condom put on. Mm-hmm. It's not frightened. When you were how old? Practice. This was I d- I do this, this later on. This is now. Yeah, do this now. Yeah, okay, so. But really, yeah. he shouldn't have to. All right. If four, 14 yeah. and 15, I know right. I've heard Drew Don't say have this, sex. the brain circuitry is not all there for experiencing the sex act completely. And the girls, a 14-year-old girl, she is tr- simply being victimized. I mean, she's not even... Joe, experiencing. all right, we're all going to hell. Joe, yeah. Joe, Did Joe, hang up. Asleep. You're, oh, is he snoring? <laughs> oh, I like it. Here, we've had white dots. I want some orange dots. Here. Yeah. All right, orange I think dots? Joe's uh, taking a nap. We'll try and get back with him. Alex? Um, um, yeah, um, I got these, like, orange dots on my penis. They're just, like, in one spot. Have you washed it? Uh, yeah, Try water. Wash it and everything like that. Is that oh. Cheetos joke I used to have? <laughs> You're, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can wash yeah, your you hands might after keep your, snacking. Yeah, you might want to keep your penis out of the Cheetos bag. Okay, <laughs> seriously, you're 13. Have you been sexually active? Is there a chance that you've contracted something? Um, I haven't been sexually active. I just, like, masturbate. All right. Uh, so it wouldn't be... It wouldn't masturbate? Whether it's orange or... It would be a venereal disease. No. Sometimes folliculitis, where there are little hairs at the base of the penis, there's some inflammation. Uh, there are various normal variants. Uh, again, there's no, there's nothing like having the doctor take a look at exactly what we're discussing because uh, there are so many different types of skin problems you can have. But at, at 13 years old, uh, I it's doubt it's the It's not sexually active. It's not right. sexually active. Don't worry so. about it. Stop obsessing. Brett, <laughs> yeah, run it off. Well, I have. You're 19. What's erections. going on? You have what? I have 24-hour erections. They won't go away. So, uh, wow. it, by the way, if you have a 24-hour erection, doesn't that mean a 48, a 72, and just a lifetime worth of erection? So it never goes down. Or do you mean? Like, I'm, uh, all day I have an erection. Then, like, I'll wake up the next morning. It'll be gone. It happens like once or twice a week. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you? Uh, have a woman? Do you have a girlfriend? No. No. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. That's a shame. You know, that's like it's like walking around with a five gallon uh uh bucket of gas and not having a car. Just dragging it around uh all day <laughs> and never having any kind of car. So you walk around with this boner and nothing to do with it. Do you have nocturnal emissions? Do you have uh I have had you, them before but and do you masturbate on a regular basis or uh not that much. Like what if you masturbate? What if you masturbate with this erection? Will it go away? No. No. Uh, that's bad because after you're done masturbating, you don't want to see that thing. Is, is this a sudden change, or have, has this always like been this way, or uh... just the past few months? Okay. You are you taking see, anything? No. No. What's me- that called? Priapism? Yeah. Well, priapism he doesn't have. Priapism, it, the erection's there, and uh, you have to have surgery too. Isn't it kind of painful too? Probably oh, hard. Yeah, and it's very painful. You have the surgery for what? To the engorgement of the blood in the uh, in the tissues mm-hmm. uh, require surgery to get the blood Drain. out, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there are certain medications that can cause that. It can. Uh, All right. So what's causing this? Yeah, I don't know. Tell All the right. Truth. I would I would talk to your family physician. I would suspect you'd refer you to a urologist and. Uh, well. It's- I'm I'm in a wheelchair, so it's not that big of a problem. Like no one can really see it, but I just want to know if it's probably harmful or. Okay, what other? Me- Why in a wheelchair? You're just oh, I have, uh, lazy or? Dystrophy. Oh, okay. Okay, well that's well, some kids just you know they just don't want to work. You know? Yeah, well, you're not on any medication. I always wanted to get one of those you know electric Nothing. ones. You know? so, so, hey, if you want to try my wheelchair, I'll be at your concert at Portland. All right. Oh, all, right. all right. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Make I, sure you come up and say hi. I know a couple of girls that would probably like to meet you. Does, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so you have, uh, muscular dystrophy, so you're in the wheelchair. Yeah. And, and are you on any medication or anything yeah, for that that not. could cause this? 
No, it, it, my my disease is like a joke. They never like when I go in. They're just like, "Oh, hi, it's nice to see you. you've been waiting for two hours." Out the door. There's nothing we can really do. Is that's it? What about uh, Jerry Lewis? Doesn't he do something for this? Yeah, I suppose that there's studies going on, but it's kind of like crapshoot at the moment. Yeah, nothing. I've seen nothing. And how does it manifest itself, other than you being in the wheelchair? Well, it started when I was about nine. And as progressively, my muscles became weaker and weaker to the point where I had to get in a wheelchair. Like, I'd be walking around, and, like, someone barely tapped me. I fall over, and I can't get back up, so. Do you, now, uh, can you experience, a, you know, sensation and stuff when you have an orgasm? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, then that's all right. You're fine. But now, uh, you still got to roll into a urologist and figure out what's going on with the penis, right? Okay. You think it's connected to uh, the MD? Oh boy, I don't. I don't really know to tell you the truth. I'm not an expert at muscular dystrophy. It's a. It's a progressive muscle degeneration that occurs, and it's uh, a terminal could it, problem. But could it, could it be that it affects the the blood flow in some way? In that it sense, certainly could. It's the nervous. The nervous system shouldn't be uh, affected there. But mm -hmm. I, um, I. He has. I guarantee he has a couple of physicians that he sees on a regular basis, and any change like that needs to be followed up right away. Daniel. Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. All right. Is your voice changing right now? Huh? Okay. What's going on? I want to know if maceration cause acne. Can it cause uh, acne? On your penis, you mean? No, on my face. No. Well, if you hit yourself in the face, it can cause... <laughs> yeah. No, but... I got pink eye once. <laughs> <laughs> but with puberty... I told that son of a bitch to point it the other way, but, you know, <laughs> you know they always say the same thing. Uh, don't worry about it. Just relax. I'll tell you when it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also want to know when the Snoop Dogg coming. Snoop Dogg is uh, coming in uh, at the end of the week. Uh, do you have... Do you have pretty severe acne? Huh? Do you have a real problem with acne? Yeah. Is it... And do you see a doctor and get any medication for that? No. Nah. Okay. There's really good medication available, and uh, it's in this day and age, if you have access to a physician, which everybody should, there's great treatment for it. So well, here's a, both acne and masturbation. Here's my take on this. Puberty, though, so. yeah, everyone thought, you know, everyone thinks, you know, fried food or chocolate or masturbating or you know, cleaning your skin or whatever that, whether drinking a lot of water. But the bottom line is, is I always knew people who got zits and ones that didn't. And the ones mm -hmm. that got zits didn't seem to do anything any different than the ones that didn't. It was a total sort of genetic crapshoot. I knew kids that, you know, uh, they, they, you know, they would wash uh, M&Ms down with Yoo-Hoo and then uh, <laughs> rub a, a Big Mac on their face. They wouldn't actually eat the Big Mac. They'd just uh, rub it on their face and they wouldn't get a zit. And then there are guys who are constantly, you know, they're cleaning their face, they're drinking all water, everything. They got zits. It's just that's just actually, a genetic hand that you could dealt, right? Actually, I I have a, a theory behind it, and I mean, I wouldn't allow, tell everybody to try this, but I I had the same problem until I was a junior and senior in high school, and then uh, when I started skipping classes, I noticed that uh, you know it pretty much cleared up. So I think it's actually the fluorescent <laughs> lights in school Interesting. that causes. Uh, it's probably this. the stress related. Yeah. It's probably, yeah. No, so, uh, I, th I think it's the fluorescent lights. I there, think they're going to allow you to get out in the world a little bit. When I was a kid, they were not that we're advocating <laughs> for you to drop. Yeah, out of you school, know, don't yeah. don't skip classes. I was getting radiation for treatment me. for it. They, when <laughs> I was were? a kid, they, well, they did it to everybody, and a lot of people. Everyone had who had zits. Everybody who had zits who had insurance. Huh. <laughs> really? Doctor, they got radiation. Wow. Treatment? They had oh, low man. low level of radiation. The theory was that would decrease the amount of inflammation. I, I guess, and there are. Some people that had uh, many treatments developed thyroid cancer because of oh, the proximity of the thyroid. So yeah. there have been a lot of theories. And All right, but the, it, the deal is is uh, it's, it's, you, you can get on as, Accutane. You can use some over-the-counter yeah. junk. You know, you can deal with it now. Accutane mm -hmm. is just amazing. For people that have pit, uh, the inflammatory uh, it's It's a acne. nightmare. Yeah. I, I had, uh, once I put the... Uh, one time I was working with Bondo, you know, the stuff you put on your car, <laughs> you put on your car yeah. fenders. And, uh, you know, Bondo's two parts, a catalyst and a uh, drying agent or a catalyst and a, whatever the, the Bondo Activator material is. And uh, I was reading the ingredients. The thing said 90 percent benzoyl peroxide on there because it's the drying agent that cures the Bondo. So right. I thought to myself, hey, if uh, what am I buying this uh, this uh, clear cell crap for with the 5 and 10% when I got the 90% right. right here? 
So I put some of this Bondo catalyst <laughs> oh, on my face. Dry your face you really right did. off. Yeah, I yeah, did. No. Hell yes. 90% benzoyl peroxide. What you was the other 10%? Get it at Pep Boys. <laughs> Lie. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, it sulfuric was, acid. It yeah. was uh, mm-hmm. it was the uh, <laughs> hepatitis is what the other ten uh, percent was. That's what it's mm-hmm. All right, we'll I'll take ourselves a little break. Static X is our guest tonight. We'll uh, hear something off CD, and we'll be back after this. Let's have some more fun. Okay, let's do it. Call Love Line one eight hundred Love one ninety one. Love Line. We'll be right back. Well, here's how it's sampled. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce, sitting in for Dr. Drew. Perfectly qualified and uh, no reason not to take his advice. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Uh, Snoop Dogg in uh, later on in the week. Static X is uh, here tonight. You can uh, find him in uh, Seattle on the 28th, and then uh, I'll just uh, list the cities, and then pretty much the dates will just keep going up uh, numerically. Portland on the 29th, and uh, San Francisco, L.A., they'll be uh, second and third. They'll be in here for uh, two days. Then uh, Atlanta on the uh, 12th. 15th, they'll be in uh, Washington, D.C. This is, uh, of course, in February. New York on the 18th, Cincinnati on the 23rd, Detroit on the 25th, on the 27th, uh, Columbus, Ohio, and uh, then on the 1st of uh, March, they'll be in Chicago, and they'll be uh, out with um, Power Man 5000. That's right. Okay. Gina. Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Um, I had a question. Um, I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to have a serious relationship because I I have a lot of casual sex. Is is this true? Is this going to, like, affect me in some way? or? Well, the the casual sex won't cause you not to have a serious relationship, but the reason you're having right. a lot of casual sex will cause you not to have a serious relationship. Okay. Well, all right. Thank you. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Call again. <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> thank you. Drive through. <laughs> what's, what's going on in the past? Um, well, I had a relationship before. It was a long relationship of, like, two years. It was like a complete mess. He cheated on me. I cheated on him. It was a bunch of crap. Yeah. What was your relationship with your dad like? Um, my dad doesn't live with me. No. When you were two years old, uh-huh. three years old. Well, huh? she, she, when you were much younger. What she about? She cheated on him when she was two. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> no. Just what was your, your home life oh, like? Yeah. What was it like when you were uh, growing up and when I, you were younger than that? I grew up with my mom, a single parent family. Uh huh. So my dad was never in the picture. Uh huh. He so he basically abandoned the family. Yeah. Okay, so here's what goes on. Okay. Um, your dad abandoned you, so relationships are kind of tough because you're scared the guy's going to abandon you. So you don't really get into anything serious where you can be vulnerable. You get into a whole host of casual things and one-night stands where you never have to experience that that pain of loss again that you already experienced when your dad abandoned you so early on in life. So, Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Have you gone to a counselor before? No. Okay. Yeah. You just you got to kind of uh, talk to a shrink or read a book or something, work it out a little bit. You'll you'll continue to sabotage things. Or you do what way. I do, which you actually read at the shrink. <laughs> I'll bring the mm-hmm. race form in sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it, but I'm like, hey, listen, yeah. Four Eyes, I'm giving you ninety bucks. Relax. <laughs> if I want to look at the race form, I look at the race form. It's my form of therapy. So, you, Gene, Gene, are you comfortable with that concept? I mean, is that yeah. Makes sense enough for you to do something about it, or is it like, well, well, I don't know if I'm going to go to counseling or anything. All right, good. Well, I'll earn your own <laughs> your own self created hell for the rest of your life. Okay. It, all right. Do you think? All right. Maybe maybe your mom had a lot of boyfriends. Do you think it's environment? She just grew up that way, and so she's well, the, used to that. You know, they, one thing Freud said about the relationship with the opposite sex parent, you know, having a real bearing on your future relationship. I mean that does seem to to bear out and or the lack of a relationship having conse- Here, dire consequences here's the bottom line it you know people are pretty easy and they're pretty consistent and it's mm-hmm. just sort of easy math everybody 
loves to turn psychology into some sort of mystic, esoteric something that either you subscribe to or you don't. Mm -hmm. You people are deluding yourselves. <laughs> I sit here night after goddamn <laughs> night. I hear the same question every goddamn <laughs> night, and I know what the answer is before they get the question out of their mouth. I know what the situation is. Mm -hmm. If you're a young girl, especially women, and dad has uh, cut out on the family, you got serious abandonment issues, mm -hmm. and it's going to make all relationships after that with a guy, uh, it's going to factor in quite heavily. You will either not get into serious relationships, and the serious <laughs> ones you get into, you will get him to abandon you by cheating on him or acting out in some way so that you can sort of recreate that dance of your youth. Now, a lot of people don't believe in therapy or they don't believe in psychology or they think they're going to will themselves through this or they think they're going to go to church and pray on it. You people will lock yourselves into this syndrome and wallow in it for a good 10 to 15 years, and that's minimum. Mm -hmm. Your only shot, get a little therapy, read a few books. That's it. Or you can just be damned to repeat the same mistakes over and over in your life, whatever they are, whether it's your dad abandoning you or whatever it is. You're, we're all doomed. Well, and a lot that's of it, what I'm saying. Yeah, and a lot of it has to do with hard wiring. When you're zero to three years old, a lot of things happen in your brain. That some of these, some of these, have a window of opportunity for growth to occur in certain parts of the brain. The relationship with the mother is critical for those, for that growth to occur. And so, finding out what exactly was going on the first three years of life is is really important. Sometimes to to determine, how, you know, when you have problems with kids that are violent uh, as, as they get into school and later on and have real trouble with relationships, et cetera, et cetera, you can sometimes correlate it with some of the development. All right, but the, the point is, is you have to undo what has been done to you, and that's got to be done in a therapeutic process. Right. And there you go. Thank you. Stephanie? Yeah. And all you idiots who become born again, please. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Where did that You'll come be from? shooting smack within a week. <laughs> <laughs> because people are lazy, and what they do is they go the easy route. They go the God route. Anything but go and confront what the real issues are. And so they just find Jesus Christ. That keeps them on the straight and narrow for a little while. But don't worry. They'll it's be kinda, back. It's kind of <laughs> shifting. Well, it's kind of like shifting your addiction anyway. At that Absolutely. Point, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like one minute it's heroin. The next minute you're smacking Jesus. me in the head with a Bible. You know, I go through the same thing <laughs> with my patients. A healthy relationship with Christ is right, fine. A healthy right. relationship with a 12-step program. But the people that are have fanatics or addicts to their program or their belief are right. not the people to, to judge Christ by or to judge an AA program by. And that's yeah. very difficult to, you know, without All right, about right. the Listen, rightness I'm not or saying Christ was a bad guy. He had a few <laughs> valid points. <laughs> I'm willing to c concede that. Stephanie, mm -hmm. uh, you're 15. Mm. Yeah. What's up? Okay, I seem to be attracted to really chaotic relationships. All right. Like, there is this girl, she's like a close friend of mine, and she had this boyfriend who would kind of push her around, and actually he wound up getting her pregnant, and I was really attracted to him, and I felt really guilty about it, but... Right. Well, there was did, just something did you ever that. act on it? No, I didn't, because I'm not very uh, aggressive. Well, you know, having feelings and, and uh, reacting to things and, and acting on them are totally different things. That was a horrible statement. I didn't even know what it meant myself. <laughs> I really got to get what? some sleep. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm saying. You, huh? you yeah. can have fantasies and you can have notions and that kind of thing. Building. But if you don't right. act mm -hmm. on them, you're all right. Yeah. And if you don't think you're going to act on them, you're all right. But the thing is, is I wish I could act on them. Well, yeah. but there's something inside of you that is saying this is wrong. I'm not going to do it. But you're attracted back to what you. I mean, did you have a pretty chaotic home when you were a kid? Uh, yeah, you could say that. How could I say that? What's the story? Uh, I well, think you just said uh, it. I don't even live <laughs> with my parents anymore. My mom was addicted to heroin, and my dad kind of abandoned the whole family. Now I live with my aunt. Right. See, okay, you don't. We uh, were do just you feel like? About that. What do you feel like it's going to take to get you to the point where you're not attracted to the chaos? Because that that becomes a problem. Because then you, it's hard to uh, to get where you want to go with an, a healthy, normal relationship. What do you? Okay at the point where I don't even want to not be attracted to it. I kind of enjoy it. Run with it. Yeah, and that's, again, you you get sort of hardwired. Your brain is set up uh, to function in the environment that it developed in, sort of. And it takes a program. It, you know, not just counseling, go sitting in somebody's office laying on the couch telling about dreams, but it takes work. And sometimes to have 
somebody that helps you with a plan that can sit down with you and say, okay, this is how you got where you are, and this is what we can work on with you so that you can get healthy. And it gives you the opportunity to have a plan yeah. that you can work on. And, and Stephanie, you gotta, you got to work on that plan because uh, the junkie mom and the abandoning dad, this is a disaster. I mean, you got you got to work on this. And you have a certain number of years. You know, Drew was telling me at one point, he said, well, you know, you have until you're 45 and to, to work through some of these personality issue type things. And, you know, I'm 44, so I'm sitting looking at him like, hmm. I got a year left. <laughs> oh, you, mean, a year left. you mean what, before they're <laughs> locked in? Do it. Before, yeah. well, it, it's like some kind of lo- like emotional Logan's run or yeah, something. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> no, but really, there is a window of opportunity again, and maybe it's the... The, all right, the all right, energy come on. that you can... come on consolidate, well, buddy. She's, she's like two hours. She's show. like fifteen. I mean, where is she going to like get therapy at fifteen? You know, uh, who's she going to talk to? Well, that's, I mean, we should ask her. Counselor at school, yeah. the church. Uh, it just any. And, and here's what you can do too for those of you who uh, can't afford uh, <laughs> counseling and everything. Just don't act out. You have an mm-hmm. impulse, stay home. You, you know Masturbate. what I mean? I, I mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> There's a. It's really easy to know the difference between right and wrong. It, it, in, the and they know the they just can't control their impulses. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, you're 17. Yeah, yeah. The best thing our callers could do is nothing most of the time. That will keep yeah. them out of trouble every time, yeah. Matt. And if you yeah. have to do something, masturbate. That's right. You're 17. <laughs> uh huh. Your girlfriend is uh, trying to set you up to see if uh, you're going to cheat. Yeah, she thinks I am, but so she she's... Like, she sent her one of her friends over to my house uh, yesterday, and then her friend was friend didn't try to hit on me or nothing, but she told me what my girlfriend was trying to do to me. And then my girlfriend told me, because we was drinking last night, and she told me. And I just got all upset and everything, and I don't know what to do about it. All right, hold on there, man. Interesting. Sent, uh, mm. And uh, diabolical at the mm. same time. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> effective. He sent a good-looking chick over to a 17-year-old guy's house to try to get him to cheat. Believe me, there's going to be cheating going on here. Yeah. We will uh, take a little break. Static X is here. We will uh, speak to Matt when we come back, and I uh, promise we'll hear uh, something off the uh, Static X CD after this. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. Yep. Oh, now yeah, we started the show. It's a love line. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Wayne and uh, Tony and Ken are all here from uh, Static X. Wisconsin Death Trip is the name of the CD. We're going to finish this call, and then we'll uh, hear uh, one last cut off of that. We were speaking to Matt. Yeah. And uh, so your girlfriend tried to set you up. You're 17. Tried to set you up by sending one of her attractive friends over Yeah. to seduce you. I guess, but... I- she didn't do nothing. And uh, how does that uh, work when you're 17? You see, it's, I, I, I can see I can see it being a little you being a little suspicious because it's like, uh, hey sailors, that's your Volkswagen that's up on cinder blocks in your parents' driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. Ooh, new Nintendo? <laughs> nice. <laughs> is that you know, N64? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, your dad let me in, and he seemed like a nice guy. He offered me a Rice crispy Square. <laughs> I'm, it's an like an aphrodisiac for me. I mean, how's that supposed to work when on. you're 17? I don't know. Well, did she just show up at your house? Oh, well, yeah. She's one of my friends, too, but she just came over, like, all of a sudden. And yeah. I don't know. She just... I don't know. She didn't hit on me or nothing. What'd she do? She spilled the beans? No, well, a little bit. She, like, hinted around to it, and I was, and then my girlfriend told me, because we was drinking, and she was getting oh. drunk. Well, does she have any cause to uh, suspect that you'd be cheating? Well, one time we broke up, but I didn't cheat on her. I, like, I had, like, three girls, but I, we wasn't going out, and she got all pissed off at me. And, so you did cheat, or you didn't? No, I didn't. You did not cheat? Did. Okay. And is she kind of chaotic? A little bit. Yeah. She sounds like a handful. Mm-hmm. She is. <laughs> All right. So how old is she? Uh, she's 17, too. Okay. So, Matt, here's your job. Don't get her pregnant. Oh, I know. I, I thought I did once, and I got scared. <laughs> okay. Well, good. 
have that fear um, bleed into your next sexual encounter so that you wear a condom, okay? Yeah. All right there, man. All right. Now listen to me. All of you are going to make your share of mistakes. You're going <clears> to <throat> get hooked up with some screwy, chaotic women. You don't even know how to pick the nutty ones from the norms when you're 17. You don't even know it at, at 25 or 27. I mean, it's hard. I mean, you're just you're just happy you got You're one. just along <laughs> with the ride. Wow, someone's willing to hold still long yeah. enough for me to have sex? <laughs> They're in. Hey, you're my girlfriend. Uh, what? Oh, I don't know how to say that in Korean. Hey, you're, but you're my new girlfriend. <laughs> just, that's good. Here, here's some money. Stay here. Well, this, Please, this love is, me. This is the communication through drunkenness syndrome. Uh, uh, you know, they, they did get communication. The, but. The, the point is, is if you get somebody pregnant, then they now... Now it's a lifetime commitment. Yeah. yeah. Do not get them pregnant, Your especially crazy ones. Well, All right. Uh, we will. Uh, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. Actually, I was going to tell the guy, too. You know, uh, trust is a pretty important part of a relationship, too. So if she doesn't trust you, maybe you need to uh, sit down and have a talk with her. Yeah. I'm sober. Sure. Dumper. Yeah. Sober. Sober. We will uh, hear something from uh, Static X. Now, what the hell? Uh, what are we going to hear? Are we hearing uh, I'm with Stupid? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. You guys want to do that? Yeah. Talk of uh, Wisconsin Death Trip. Mm -hmm. I'm with Stupid. Uh, thanks for the mic. That is uh, Static X off of their uh, gold CD, Wisconsin Death Trip. Ooh. We will uh, also, uh, they are on the uh, Scream 3 soundtrack, which is coming out, I think, February 2nd, if I remember from uh, Tuesday. Actually, when, uh, or the 3rd? January 25th. What? 
Oh, the soundtrack, but uh, yeah, the movie. Right, the movie. Right. That's right. The soundtrack's yeah. out like a week before the movie comes out. Yeah, the movie out. comes out the fourth. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You about to get funky, yo. Hit it. This is Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. Oh, we'll be right back. All right, that is it. Hey, the show went fast, and that's uh, always a good sign. Shut my mic off. That means uh, <laughs> <laughs> that means it wasn't boring, at least to me. So that's it. Static X, thank you uh, very much for coming in. Thank Wisconsin you. Death you. Trip, everybody, get that CD. These uh, guys are uh, officially friends of the show, and uh, whenever uh, we have a friend of the show, we need you to uh, support those friends. All right, and uh, look for them uh, coming to a town near you, and also uh, on the Scream Three soundtrack. Thanks again, guys. Oh, thank, thank you, you. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Bruce, who did a wonderful job tonight, saying mahalo. I'm in pain. My breast hurt. <laughs> well, now. This has been Loveline. The stuff expressed on Loveline is not necessarily the stuff of the staff, management, sponsors, or anyone else, including Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Ingold. Now, please enjoy these birds.